Pods on the Key of Springfield just did our first watch through of the Simpsons movie. The Simpsons movie directed by David Silverman. David Silverman. The first thing that struck me is, uh, so it's been about 11 years since I've watched. So I watched it in uh, in cinemas. Yeah. In the Simpsons movie in cinemas. Haven't seen it since. Um, I believe it came out in 2007. Oh, I thought it was 2006. Okay. Well, that means it's 10 years since I've seen it. And actually, we watched it together in the cinema 10 years in ago. In fact, it might have been 2008. I'm thinking back. I remember huh. writing about it in a street pest, uh, street press I used to street, write for. Street pest? Yeah, street pest. That was me. Yeah, that's me. Um, Yes, you're looking it up right now, are you? You're banging it? 2007, according to Wikipedia. Ooh, okay. July 2007. Well, I've got no sense of time, so it's entirely possible I that mean, 2007 was the... Uh, sure. Maybe it didn't hit Australia until 2008, but I feel like that's unlikely. Yeah, it's very unlikely. Um, It's been... Sorry. Yeah, it's been... Um, So, uh, 10 years since we last watched this movie together. Yeah, sure. That feels nice. Yeah. Does it? I don't know. Uh, first thing that struck me is far out. I did not remember the Green Day cameo. So that not, does sort of come out of nowhere, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. So not only the, quite genuinely the, just out of nowhere, Green Day appears at the start. And, yeah, and they play like a version of the theme song, and it's like uh, then they they're animated playing a sh- a gig on a barge. And the whole town's there. I don't think Edwin Krabappel's a Green Day fan. This seems to be a thing that happens in later day Simpsons episodes. If a guest star, like a music guest star pops up, Mm. the entire town is super into it regardless of Mm. what their character is, whether they would actually be likely to give a shit about whoever the members of Green Day are. The only exception I think I have to that is the 200th episode where Blink-182 are in, because the whole town doesn't go to the Blink gig. It's only the the skateboarding crowd. Yeah, yeah. And because of your deep love of Blink-182. I'm wearing a Blink-182 jumper right now. Is that what your shirt says? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it said uh, Link 82. I thought it was a. Uh, huh. I don't know what that would be a reference to. But uh, huh. yes, The Simpsons movie. Yeah. So. On the big screen. I'm going to come right out swinging. Um, didn't have very good m- memories of thinking the movie was good. And yeah. after watching it, fuck, it's not very good. <laughs> See, I. In my memory, I thought that I was. A, I thought that this was a good film. I remember enjoying this a lot. I saw it in the cinema twice. Watching it again now, I don't know. You it feel seemed, like twice was too many. It feels like a movie very much of its time, which seems like an odd thing to say about a movie that is only ten years old. But there was a lot of stuff in it that stood out as a. Uh, yeah, you know, something I would be more on board with ten years ago than I am now, at mm. whatever age I am now. Mm, yeah, there were. I mean, there were a couple. There were quite a few times that something would happen, and you or I would just go, "Ooh, not into that." Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of a lot of jokes at or uh, jokes at the expense of, or at least kind of attempted joke references to gay people. I'm not, I, and it's one of those things where you know, as, as we as we talked about during the, because I'm sorry to ruin the illusion for everyone at home, but we do actually talk during things. We don't just sit here. Well, and, Nick does. I sit here in complete silence, just staring at the screen, and he tries to talk to me. I just give him an angry look. <sighs> I was hoping you wouldn't bring that up on the pod. Sometimes um, he starts crying. I was hoping you wouldn't bring that up on the pod. Well, I have now. So Fuck. what are you going to do? Fuck. Um, no, it's fine. But uh, things things where where I was left thinking, was that an appropriate thing 10 years ago? Or were they trying to be edgy then and perhaps they hit, perhaps they missed, but now it just looks so 
incredibly out of place. Homer is very sexually confused in this movie in a way that I'd forgotten. Yeah. At the start, he seems... There's a bit where Ned says he has something to tell everyone in the church, and Homer is very hopeful that Ned will reveal himself to be gay. Yeah, what's up with that? For reasons that are unclear. At one point, he wants to kiss or possibly fuck a pig. Uh, I think I think kissing was the, the start of a Cora Bernardi slippery slope. Yeah, I think he wanted to pork that pig. To pork that pig? Yep. Nice. Right, uh, get all porky. How long were you working on that line for? Uh, since I saw the movie originally, I've uh, yeah, had it in my pocket. I wanted to bring home that bacon. Yep, he likes making bacon on the beach. Is that where bacon's made? It could be. I think bacon's made in a piggery. In a piggery? Yeah, I'd say so. Is that so. like a bakery, but with pigs? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. From from my from my understanding, after watching uh, the leading documentary on bacon... Um, Black Pig? No, I was trying to think of a movie with Kevin Bacon. White Man Can't Jump? Is that a Kevin Bacon movie? <laughs> it might be. I don't know. I don't really partake in films. <laughs> No, I've gathered. Ah, well, um, you watch this film though. Yeah, this and like Frozen. Those are your two films. Uh, Lion King. Yeah. Yep. My yeah. three. Those are the three. Lion King's got some issues. We won't dig yep. into that. That has got some issues. I think it's fair to say that will come up at some point. So I'm just gonna leave that for now. Undoubtedly. Man, yeah, so there's some uh, there's some stuff. I took a few notes in this. Um, sure. At the beginning. We see Itchy running for president, and his running mate is Hillary Clinton. Hillary and, uh, running for president? Well, that would never happen. Running for vice president, technically, but oh. this is a. Uh, there's some odd political stuff in here. We've got Schwarzenegger as yep. the president mm-hmm. who refuses to read anything and yep. uh, doesn't, you know, just lets other people make decisions yep. for him and yep. blindly stumbles into horrifying disasters. In a way that the film largely glosses over, but now seems incredibly resonant. Yeah, I'm... even though the actual Arnold Schwarzenegger mm. is in some sort of uh, apprentice-based feud with the actual president. Yeah, no, that's it, that's become out to be very, very strange. Um, I find it also strange that they the nameplate on the president's desk says Arnold Schwarzenegger, but actually it's just McBain with different coloured hair. Yeah, and I know that Wolfcastle. They never yeah, really. They never, uh, and like you know, I know that there's a parallel to be drawn between McBain and Schwarzenegger initially, but they they don't try to like it's literally just Rainier Wolfcastle in yeah. slightly different coloured hair. There's some weird shit in this film. And they show. And did buds. I tell you Green Day were in this film? Yeah, and they fucking die. Yeah, they, they drown die in a lake. Oh, you get with Bud's weird little fishy dick flopping around. Fishy. Yeah, his weird little fishy dick and little balls on either side just flapping around in the breeze. When he skateboards. Yeah, he's... Yeah, that's that's such an odd intro to a film. Hey, we're fixing the tiles on the roof. Oh, by the way, you should skateboard naked through the town. I, your father, Homer Simpson, am telling you, my <laughs> son, 10-year-old Bart, to skateboard naked through the town. One thing we notice is that within about 10 minutes of this film starting... They've established four different plot lines, four distinct different oh, plot lines. They pop up so quickly. Yeah. There's a uh, Bart having some sort of thing with Flanders where he uh, wants Flanders to be his dad. There's a uh, there's the whole thing with like grandpa losing his mind in the church and Marge saying, "Ah, it's a religious experience." And there's Lisa trying to fuck Bono and there's uh, <laughs> whatever Homer's up to. He's just gallivanting around with a big fat pig and making his son show his dick to the town. And Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I just I just don't like this movie. And then Russ Cargill pops up and he's uh, he's also got some weird Trump parallels where he mentions that he owns the dome that they drop on Springfield. I thought owns, that was... Owns the, the, the company that makes the domes. Yes. Yeah. And I haven't quite worked out the, uh, you know, the connections to, uh, you know, the shit we've been talking about. I don't know how Colossus figures in. I feel like maybe once Ooh, we get fuck. to season three, four, we can start to really look into Colossus and time travel and all the other things that we've been yeah, hinting at. Yeah, it, it's difficult because, you know, so so we've got to the end of season one and then we've jumped forward, what, sure, 17 years or something. Yeah, give or from, take. Yeah, from 89 to 2007. So 
I think it's a little early for us to. So I was happy for the season one colossal um, uh, parallels. I think we're jumping a bit far ahead because I think by the time we get to two thousand and seven, Colossus, um, Colossus, yes, fuck, Colossus's, uh, you know, reach through the town has changed dramatically from what it yeah, was in nineteen eighty nine. So I think it's a little too soon. But as we start progressing through the seasons, I, I believe, I foreshadow, I foresee that we will be able to start drawing more parallels. I feel like, yes, at this point, we have some sort of, like, a Marvel Universe secret empire, like Hydra's whole uh, thing. Just I haven't read these comics, but my understanding is that uh, the Simpsons movie and Colossus's hold over the town basically parallels them exactly, I would assume. I would assume. Yeah, it seems like a fair assumption to be making. Mm, 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 mm. I've been much fucking this film, which I liked. Yep. Yeah. I like that you're on uh, Homer and Marge fuck watch. Yeah, definitely. I've um I've been keeping notes every time Homer and Marge have sex mm. in the series and now that I'm saying it onto a recorded podcast it sounds a bit strange, but I think there's nope. a lot of merit in this. I think uh nope. I think it's very important that they still have this active sex life in the mm-hmm. later movie, even when uh, censorship standards have changed and uh Nothing else is really going well in their marriage, and Marge is obviously trapped in a loveless, awful just regime, frankly. But, uh, regime? Yeah. I think... Um, I mean, this is a pretty fucking grim movie in terms of their marriage. Yeah, it is. Um, oh, God. My sentences are all just unable to be concocted. Um, yeah, well, we are doing this quite late at night. <laughs> it is, uh, yeah. I mean, late by our standards because we're uh, we're old men now. There is a line in there where Marge asks Homer why he did all the things he did, and he says he doesn't know, he doesn't really know why he does things, and then he says something along the lines of, uh, I just try to make the days hurt less until I can crawl into bed with you, which is a line that mm. uh, fucking terrified me in how much it uh, resonated with me, frankly, mm-hmm. it was... Uh, you know, I thought, oh, yeah, I've definitely had that feeling before. That makes a lot of sense to me. That's a mm. dark moment to hit me while I'm watching this uh, and, this I mean, kid's film about children skateboarding around with their dicks hanging out. And, yeah. Uh, and, you know, I I didn't want to... Um uh, I didn't want to bring this up, yeah, sure. you know, so, so soon. But, you know, I, I remember that time when you in your backyard had a four-meter-high silo full of pig shit. Yeah. And it, it was indeed during a time where all you tried to do was make the days hurt less until you could crawl into bed with, I mean, not me, but yeah, but, yeah. but someone else. It was a weirdly phallic tower as well. Yeah, your your silo, like Homer's silo, just a big old aluminium dick. The big When the big dick, the big aluminium dick of pig shit in the backyard of The Simpsons pops up, I don't know, it's been a while since I've seen this film, and I start to really worry, like, is there going to be a scene... Where this big metallic dick starts ejaculating shit. I yeah. really thought it, it seemed like a distinct possibility, which I guess is a condemnation of the film in general that it seems yeah. like a possibility. I mean, that I f- maybe a big aluminum dick is going to start pissing shit everywhere. <laughs> I feel like that's more of a South Park thing than a Simpsons thing. Yeah, I could see that happening in a South Park, and I wouldn't even I wouldn't even dock points from a South Park movie for doing that. <laughs> Have you been have you been scoring episodes of South Park? No. Okay. You haven't been sitting there with a little notebook just uh Stop looking at my notebook. Oh, I'm gonna dock points for that one. Oh, I'm docking points. Ooh. Is that... <laughs> docking points, is that a new character? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm docking points, Ooh, I am. Oh, it's me docking points. What have you done there? Points off for that. There's, there's not that much to mind oh. <laughs> this character, I think. And it just um, pops up whenever points need to be docked. That trick would have been a perfect 10, but you wobbled on the land and I'm docking points, and I'm docking points for that. Have you seen any other good movies lately? Oh, just the Simpsons movie. Okay. And yeah. um, docking points. <laughs> the autobiography <laughs> of Ireland's leading point docker, docking points. <laughs> Docking points by name, docking points by nature. 
Uh, ducking points, you'll never duck in this town again. Hey, you know what I was thinking about buying you uh, <laughs> last year for your birthday and then realised I didn't know your size and I wasn't going to guess? No. I was going to buy you. I found an eBay listing for cotton dockers, the <laughs> pants that they talk about in Seinfeld. And I was like, fuck, I'll just buy Jack all these pants. That'll be fucking funny. And then I went, wait, I don't know his size, and it's a very long bow for a joke. I feel like, yeah, buying me pants would have been an odd gift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sorry. bought me a shirt. It was great. With the, uh... Yeah, no, the shirt was... I, yeah. I'm happy with the shirt. I feel like the pants would have been an odd thing. Um, uh, do you remember in way back in the early days of season one? Yeah. You had no, it's a... been a while since I've watched season mm. one. Oh. You had a theory in one of the early episodes sure. that, uh, and I'm just struggling to remember where it came in, but you had a theory that at some point Bart's little Bart's little dick got punched off or burned yeah, off or like something. Torn off. Or... Torn off. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good. well, the movie has shown us, still there. Or I'm not entirely convinced that was his real dick. Surgically reattached, do you think? I think that might surgically have been... Surgically reconstructed. Uh, I think it was a fake dick. I think he's got some sort of phallic attachment, maybe. Phallic attachment. I mean, it's a weird cartoony dick. Even They're by... Phallic attachment are a great band. Yeah, I know, I know. They've, um... What's that one song, Come and Shit Out of an Aluminum Dick? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> I mean, even by cartoons... St- I don't know, like, I don't know how many cartoons I've seen that show the characters drop trow and just show their dicks. You know the old, like, if you watch the old, like, uh, Japanese versions of all the Dragon Ball cartoons, like, the main character, that's going to dick out all the time, but other than what, that... really? Yeah. Yeah, you watch old... Is that Dragon- what it was called, Cock and Ball Z? <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I was really pleased with yeah, that. Yeah, he gets his dick out, like, uh, the, there was one series they did where, like, in the opening, like, little sequence, you know, there's, like, a little opening for these shows... You see his dick during that, so every episode you, you saw Goku's dick. What? No, I, okay. That, it, it, it strikes me as surprising that that many kids shows. I don't remember Widget the World Watcher having his todger out. I know, it might be a cultural difference. I'm not really sure on this, but you maybe you definitely see a lot of that kid's dick. I don't remember uh, an up late version of Samurai Pizza's flaps. <laughs> Fuck, I don't, I don't like that joke. <laughs> Samurai Pizza flaps? Yeah. Yeah, very different show. <laughs> very different show. I don't remember... Uh, oh, perfect. J- Johnson um, and Friends? Yes, that's Drop exactly it. where I was going. Of course you were. Drop and trowel. <laughs> Drop and trowel. Well, there was that like hot water bottle and this. squash you flat with my Johnson. And wasn't there a? There was like a hot water bottle or something. Alfred. Oh, I'm very worried. <laughs> what do you reckon his dick look like? Um, sorry, I just got distracted by imagining the noise that Alfred made as he waddled. He made such a sloshy <laughs> noise. Um, <laughs> and that's really what. Uh, what was the, what was the concertina's name? I don't think it matters. No, it doesn't. Do you ever see the Jetsons' dick? Um, George Jetson? Uh, uh, Mr. Spacely's a bit of a dick, but different question. Okay. Fred Flintstone? Uh, yabba dabba do, I've got a schlong for you. You doing like a vampire impression there? <laughs> <laughs> yabba dabba do. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Ah, funny. Uh, I saw a play the other night. Any other? <laughs> I keep uh, oh, forgetting yeah. to talk about this Hang podcast. On a I'm, I'm going to recline a little bit, and you can just talk about this play for a while. Ah, I saw a play. An electric shock. It was called Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns. It was a. I think they called it a post-electric play. It's set in a post-apocalyptic universe. Post-apocalyptic America, I should say. It's not like a whole separate universe. It's just the uh, America with a K. <laughs> yeah, sure. Just like Akira, which didn't spell anything with a K, come to think of it, except for Akira itself. But anyway, it's a uh, post. <laughs> there's some sort. Of, there's been some sort of a nuclear event, and society has to recreate itself. Sure. From you know what's left, and uh, it starts off with a group of people sitting around a fire trying to remember old Simpsons quotes and not quite getting them right. 
which I knew because I've watched The Simpsons yes. extensively, of course. And then, uh, and also yet a little bit like us sometimes. Yep, absolutely. And then it goes through like over time, over the years, society starts to rebuild itself, and its idea of high culture is now built entirely on these misremembered scenes from Simpsons episodes. Mm. So you start to see their concept of culture throughout time, but it's all just that it gets increasingly ridiculous until the last uh, last act of, a play, of the play, without spoiling too much, is this sort of a attempt at a recreation of one of the episodes huh. that just mixes together this episode with all these different pop cultural things and uh, ends up being something entirely different from what it was originally and just a complete like weird misunderstanding of what the simpsons was in our time interesting which was a really interesting sort of thing about like cultural memory and the idea of uh, how things survive and how things get misunderstood and it makes you think you know what was shakespeare like back then when they were watching it is it different from how we understand it now and that thought experiment about toilets being altars yeah sure i'm not familiar with that but i'm sure you're right uh there's something I was taught in year 10 history okay. about what would happen if anthropologists of the future uh, looked at houses now and, and decided, well, every house has a small room with this white porcelain altar in it. We assume this was used to pray to the gods. That's but for act- shit, that is. But actually, they're talking about toilets. I mean, what are the people of the future shitting into? Not to mention pissing. Don't think I forgot about pissing. God, this is a crude podcast. What does George Jetson piss into? Uh, I don't know, maybe humanity's evolved by that point, just releases everything through spores. Spores? Spores. No wonder why they've got a robot to do the cleaning. <laughs> Inside of the house is covered in spores. It's a living. <laughs> so after this, after this play, I went to an after party where I was repeatedly mistaken for the actor who played Homer. Oh. Huh. Yeah, who... Kind of, and at the end of the night, I met him, and it turned out we were very similar. It was kind of weird, but it's you know, yeah, that's that's sobering. I remember, I remember distinctly growing up, realizing at one point, oh, I'm the age of, I'm the age of Lisa now, mm. and then oh, I'm the age of Bart now, and I guess you know, it'll just remain at that for a while. And now I'm 29. And I think oh, I'm nearly the age of the parents on that show. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm getting mistaken for Homer Simpson at parties. I wonder if there are any... Oh, I've got to stop looking up things on the Google. <laughs> I literally was about to search 30-year-old characters in The Simpsons just to see if there's <laughs> anyone whose age is 30. I reckon Miss Hoover's 30. You reckon? I don't know why I think that. Yeah, you think uh, it seems like Miss hey. Hoover's at a point in her life where she feels like things are starting to slip away from her a little bit? Is Hoover that the... doesn't appear in the movie. No. Are there any other notable exceptions from the movie? I'd say there's probably a lot if we sat down. There's a lot of characters who pop up in the background. Yeah, and there's a lot of characters that are like, uh, their their little cameos are just incredibly shoehorned in. Like, comic book guy. Yeah. His line was just stupid. (laughs) Dr. Nick pops up and fucking dies. Yeah. You see Chester Lampwick in one scene. I enjoyed the return of Chester Lampwick. No yeah. Norm, though. No, no. Couldn't Where the fuck was Norm? Where the fuck was Norm? I mean, we probably should have gone back and freeze frame that crowd shot just looking for Norm. Oh, shit. You're right. You, know, well, you see him and somebody nearly steps in and says, pardon my galoshes. We've got, some, <laughs> we've got some more views of this coming up after every season. So yeah. we can We can, we tap can really do a that. good Norm watch. Good Norm watch. On future, future viewings. This oh, asinine we have, movie. We have to watch that movie again. Yeah, it's better than watching Grown Ups 2 over and over again, at least. Should we explain my general disdain for movies? <laughs> I feel like it comes across. Oh, okay, cool. You just don't like movies for some reason. That's <laughs> about the extent of it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that pretty much Got an arbitrary up. dislike for the mere concept of uh, visual content, really. I just don't like people being entertained or happy. No. Well, hopefully people won't enjoy this podcast. Oh, I'm sure no one's enjoying this podcast. (laughs) I'm sure of that. (laughs) So, you know, I thought that the movie being a feature-length film would give us heaps to talk about, but I really feel like (laughs) at this early viewing, we've mentioned that we didn't enjoy it. I'm not sure what else I've got in me. Tom Hanks is in the film. It's 
You know that you know the reason they chose Tom Hanks is because they decided he was the most trustworthy actor in America, the the actor that people would have the least issue with, I suppose. Interesting. The one most likely to be able to sell the idea that this smoking crater in the middle of nowhere is a a thing that people should go and visit when he pops up in the little ad. Do you reckon that's still the case? Uh, I don't know. If you were casting most trustworthy actor in America now, who yeah. would it be? Who would you pick? I feel like I'd still just go with Tom Hanks purely because of this anecdote. I feel like yep. These people did their research. They've got more money than I do. Well, I mean, yeah, but... Oh, is he going to pick fucking Jeremy Renner? I don't think so. Who's Jeremy Renner? He's, uh... Oh, I see the Firefly guy. Firefly? No, no, that's Nathan Fillion, son. Oh, Get oh, with you, it, oh, you mean dude. Nathan, you mean Nathan Drake from Uncharted? No, you're thinking of, um, you know, Hotline Bling's Drake. You know, when he... I know when that hotline bling. Glory to the newborn king. I think that's how it goes. I don't know. I, I hear that song and I always think this sounds like it could be like a, a, a church song with some minor. Do you ever hear songs and think about how they could be altered into church songs? And whenever I've heard that, that Macklemore song about a thrift shop, I always think... This song was written so some hip pastor somewhere can change it slightly and then play it in church. I don't think I've ever heard that song. You know, I'm going to pop some tags. I got whatever the fuck in my pocket. I'm wearing my grandma's coat. It doesn't matter. It's a bad song. Very popular. I think it topped the Triple J, whatever it was Is that it one year. Is Jesus? No, I just think it's got that vibe to it. It's like a, a shitty song. That somewhere a, a youth pastor has adapted into a song uh, about Jesus. That's my feeling about that song. What about that? Um, what about Shackles by Mary Mary? Do you think that could be converted into a, a religious song? How's that one go? It's like Shackles. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, chains, chains. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. You are my shackle girl. <laughs> I've got to release you. Is that the one? Um. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know I mean, that. no, I didn't see the connection at all then. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, fair enough. Now that you put it like that. Yeah. Um, I reckon if they're going to cast uh, most trusted actor in America, let's see how well I do at this. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're going to whiff it. <laughs> you're going to say like Mel Gibson or something. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Cruise. Um, hey, Tom, if you're listening. Um. Uh. <laughs> you went into this without an answer. <laughs> you made this bed without. Because <laughs> this has been going for about 20 minutes. <laughs> what about Donald Trump? I don't think so. Ah, okay. What, what about Bono? Bono. <laughs> oh, it's me, Bono, it is. <laughs> you know, the other day, oh, I had some leftovers in the fridge. Yep. And then I left them for too long because I, you know, got busy, never got around to using them. I went to look at them and I'm like, oh no, these have started growing things. So I threw them <laughs> out in the bin. And as I was throwing them away, I had the voice of Bob Geldof pop into my head going, you know, there are children in Africa fucking starving and you're throwing that away. <laughs> and I'm just like, fuck, sorry, Bob. So you're, you've been hallucinating Bob Geldof? <laughs> I've been hallucinating Bob Geldof. Fuck. Probably because of all the spores coming off the mouldy food in my fridge. And off my George Jetson. This movie doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? No. Nah. The whole town wants to kill them. As a, he ends up... He saves everything by riding a motorbike up on the ceiling. You know, it felt like a children's film for a lot of it to me. Mm. It feels like a DreamWorks film where, you know, at the end it's just like they need to fix everything, so they just do. Sure. You know, those films are like the solution... Like, the methodology doesn't actually matter at all. Yeah. It's just like they figure out that they need to do something, so it just happens. So it just happens. Yeah. 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 No, I really didn't enjoy it. And also, quick bit of advice. If you ever get stuck under a dome that you're never going to escape from, don't light fires. Yeah. Just read that Stephen King book. They figured it out. It's going to take the oxygen if you light the fires. What you have to understand is that the dome is a metaphor for the relationship between the reader and the writer, and you just need to... uh, what? Navigate that relationship. What? Under the Dome, the Stephen King book. What? There's a, there's a book, right? It's called Under the Dome. 
It's about a clown in Derry called Ed. Chases some children. Then the apocalypse happens. And uh, Randall Flagg, I think his name is Randall Flagg, he takes over. And they have to navigate the apocalypse. But then the gunslinger, he pops up. And he's in whatever the name of the world from the gunslinger is. And uh, at the end, they go to the pet cemetery and they dig up the little boy. And um, Gerald's game is also a Stephen King novel. Well, call me Joe King. <laughs> All right. Uh, Needful Things, that was a good book. Did you read that one? Nope. Okay. What about the... <laughs> What about the girl who loved Tom Gordon? Oh, she's she's a lovely girl. Yeah, I didn't like that one. <laughs> I feel like you set me up there. Uh, anyway, I think uh, that's that's probably enough. Yeah, I'm <laughs> during the course of this podcast, I've gone from sitting up to now <laughs> I'm lying down and I've adjusted the mic stand so I can just keep talking. Well, so things have gone really well. Well, in any case, if anyone at all is listening to this, uh, thank you very much for listening to season one of uh, Pods in the Key of Springfield, which yeah, I thanks, believe was mates. the name of this podcast. Uh, yes. We'll be moving on to season two after this. I guess uh, as of right now, as of the recording of this episode, we haven't actually released anything yet. Yeah, we, we wanted, wanted to, to get, get a nice, fair lead. Yeah, we wanted to get a nice little backlog going so that we yeah. could... Uh, I don't know, what do you say? Lead. Lead sounds more positive than backlog. Yeah. Um, we wanted so, to get a nice, uh, some bank so that if anything happens to our schedule, we can still hopefully recover from it. So. If anything happens to our schedule, we're just very lazy, really. Yeah, there's that. I mean, it's, uh, so I guess by the time you hear this, if you are hearing this, maybe we've already failed. Who can say, really? Unsure. Who gives a shit? It's fine. Thank you very much for listening. If Keys you didn't hate it, that's good. If you did hate it, it's our fault, so sorry about that. Uh, mm. Follow us on Twitter. Well, we pods. Key no, Springfield. Key Springfield. Key Springfield. Key Springfield. I am J I C K L E on there. You are Nick Ibis. N I C K I B I S. Yep. And uh, that'll do. Go and go and enjoy the rest of your day. Listen to Reply All or My Favorite Murder or. One of those other podcasts that you're already listening to. They're pretty good. Um, I'm going to say listen to Little Dum Dum Club and Tofop. Yep, sure. Also podcasts. All and of and if, you like, if you like AFL, listen to The Outer Sanctum. It's a really good podcast hosted by like seven, uh, six, five or six women that are into AFL. So it's good. And if you don't like any of that, like music's pretty good. You can listen to like Kendrick Lamar or like the Beatles or... Or you could listen to the just the Green Day version of the Simpsons theme song just over and over again like I do. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you live your life. Quarter mile at a time, like the Fast and Furious. If you don't like any of that stuff, you can watch movies. They're pretty good sometimes. Oh. Uh, if content really doesn't do it for you, just like eat a nice dinner, whatever you want to get up to. That's you know, probably enough of this ramble, I think. You know, the other day, I had one of those moments where I just go, I'm actually going to be alone for the rest of my life. Because, it's, you know, someone says, hey, what are you doing on Saturday? I'll go, I'll go on YouTube and watch Jamie Oliver for eight hours. No one's going to want to join me to do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you want to deal with this? <laughs> so, oh, 13, 11, 14. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I might cut that bit out. <laughs> I say that a lot. <laughs> I feel like every podcast has scenes where they're talking about needing to cut out the thing they've just done, but it's still in there. It's true. All right, that's enough, I think. Uh, thank you. Good night. Bye, mates. God bless. Not God bless. Uh, Wizzle Wuzzle? Yeah, that'll do. Oh, um... If anyone wants me, I'll be in my room. I've got to I've got to find a quote to sign out with. Um. Oh, oh, the garage. Right. <laughs> Fuck off. It's free.